surveys on which discourse or statistics can be reliably based. The CDC calls these diseases AIDS only when antibodies for HIV are confirmed or presumed to be present. If a person tests HIV negative, then the diseases are given a different name. Again, I'd ask, how can they do this? It's totally illogical. There's no basis in science for it. It's just based on fear. It's ridiculous. Now here, let's look at the, one of the two diseases that's supposed to be, along with lifestyle factors, because you've got to keep saying that. Because if you have a weakened immune system and develop PCP, and you'll find out uh, PCP is a, is a popular diagnosis in this country, not in Africa. You can have PCP and not have AIDS, but in this country it's, it's a one. Now what happens, the poppers, the, the, the recreational drug, it uh, puts nitrates and oxidizes the blood, so the blood can't carry oxygen. So this is, this is what happens. A lot of, of drugs limit oxygen to the brain, and that gives you that high and that rush feeling. This limits oxygen to a number of different parts of the body. Limiting oxygen causes the cells to die. So now you have dead cells in your system. Dead cells in the system, uh, the first cells to suffer are the lungs, so this causes fungal infections to grow, and that's what this is. Um, now, it also happens in extreme malnutrition, such as in Africa. That's why PCP in America diagnosis is good for AIDS. PCP in Africa isn't, because malnut malnutrition will, will cause it. Now here, uh, in the Middle Ages, now when you're back riding with Genghis Khan and you want to kind of wipe out a whole community, you're going to ride by the wells and drop a dead carcass inside of a well. Now what this does, this poisons the well. What it does is it causes nitrate, nitrite bacteria to, re to reproduce. So when the people drink the water in this well, they develop fungal infections and it's toxic to the system. Okay. Now this is what they'd use to poison people. And that's also why malnutrition because of poisoned water inside of Africa spreads this type of disease. Now what's interesting, the nitrates and nitrites inside of the body are toxic. They, they also developed a drug, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, called Viagra. Now what Viagra does, it decreases the breakdown of nitric oxide. So it actually allows us to remain in your system, which is incredibly poisonous. And it allows blood to flow where it usually doesn't, okay? And it works on a similar mechanism as the nitrates and nitrites. I know you might be saying, well, since the poppers cause cancer and AIDS-like symptoms and weaken immune system, would Viagra also lead to that? Hey, who cares? You're having a good time. <laughs> no, I care. There's other ways to stimulate blood supply to certain areas. Okay, knowing that this works on a similar mechanism that's toxic and poisonous to your system, should this be allowed in our population? No or no. Okay, now, now AIDS is diagnosed differently in Africa than it is in America. I'm sorry, is chickenpox different in China and different in America? Is tuberculosis different in Australia and then different in Alaska? No. Is there any disease on the planet that has different diagnoses or did anyone got a challenge with this? Okay, good, so do I. Okay, well now here, this was 1985, it was a meeting in Central African Republic. Officiant, uh, one of the, the people, the officials there that presided over the meeting was from our own little CDC. Now, he was frustrated because uh, obviously with no blood test or no accurate test and no accurate list of symptoms that say, and we're talking in 1985, there was about 20 different diseases that were categorized at this, so you can imagine his frustration of trying to identify a disease that didn't exist. So he said, if I could get everyone at the WHO meeting, or the World Health Organization meeting to agree on a single simple definite definition, we could start counting the cases. So they did. They came up with a single definitive definition of what AIDS is in Africa. Okay, you ready? Okay. You have to have fever, diarrhea, weight loss, coughing, or itching. Okay, now, 60% of Sub-Saharan Africa, 60% of Sub-Saharan Africa live in huts with dirt floors. And the dirt, it's either dirt floors 
or it's floors made with, with cow dung to keep the dirt down. Now they have an average of seven kids. Okay, seven kids in that, in, in that one little one room. Okay, so we're talking an absolute horrible aspect of unsafe drinking water, inadequate food, basic sanitation is gone, and this is just horrible. Do you, do you think a lot of people there are going to have itching, coughing, diarrhea, or weight loss? Okay, now, do you also know that malaria, all malaria will cause um, diarrhea, weight loss, coughing, and itching? Okay, malaria has the same symptoms. Now, here, AIDS in America is radically different. We're a lot more scientifically based. Do you see the Pinocchio nose growing right now? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, now. It, now, these are diseases that can cause a positive HIV test. Okay? Now, you might find out that some of these aren't diseases. Yeast infection can cause a positive HIV test. Hepatitis, pneumonia, tuberculosis, uh, leprosy, malaria, uh, previous vaccinations, oh, I'm sorry, previous vaccinations can cause a positive HIV test. Uh, blood transfusions, arthritis, arthritis can cause a positive HIV test. Is that from the inflammatory response and the abnormal cell growth inside of the body? Yes or yes, okay. Um, drug use, yeast infections, pregnancy, ooh, that's dangerous. Try and avoid that, at, no. <laughs> Pregnancy, malnutrition, multiple sclerosis, mesa, influenza, papillomavirus, Epstein-Barr virus, leprosy, glandular fever, hepatitis, syphilis, over 60 different conditions that you get can give you a positive HIV test. Do you want to know why that's ridiculous? Okay, good, good. So I'm going to tell you. Now also, in Japan, AIDS is virtually unknown. Okay, it's almost not in the population at all. Um, except incredibly small, you're talking hundreds of a percent of the population, 25% of the people are found to be HIV positive. So is the HIV test accurate or inaccurate? I'm going to actually tell you the facts on this. Okay. Now, the fact is, in 1997, there were 29 different diseases that, that you got, along with lifestyle factors, put you in the category of having AIDS. Now, it's 48 diseases. I know, I know, when you start seeing this stuff. Now, I can go back in and tell you that retroviruses, because, you know, retroviruses causing a problem, it was first diagnosed back in um, 1958 at an experimental clinic um, inside of the Congo. That's where most of the AIDS cases first came from. And I can say that it was because the infections, or it was an experimental polio virus that was grown in infected monkey tissue and it was distributed around the Congo out of a French chemical warfare plant. And this is what developed this experimental vaccine. In Paris, in Paris, what they came up with is that it was between 50,000 and 500,000 doses of this experimental vaccine were injected in the Congo. And this is where a lot of the AIDS cases started. It wasn't AIDS, because we can see that. It was an autoimmune response where the bot people just started to die. But I'm not going to talk about that. Okay, just know that that's one of the factors. This one, the truth is, HIV tests are not standardized. They're arbitrary. The HIV test is not required for AIDS. Okay, diagnosis, because you're going to find out there's a non-specific AIDS. And all the HIV tests do, it describes a collection of non-specific um, cellular parts. Okay, now that's, that's not clear, but I'm going to show you. It's crazy to think that the AIDS in America is the same, is this, or the AIDS in Africa is the same disease that affected gay men in San Francisco in the 80s. Okay, it just doesn't make sense because it's totally different. Now this, uh, HIV negative AIDS. Have you heard of this one before? No? This is brand new. Okay, well, as of 1993. They found out that if you have a low CD4 count, you can be categorized as AIDS with, with a negative HIV test. Now, we already know that the HIV test is bogus to begin with, so they were running out of people. Now, in 1993, the CDC made a no-illness AIDS category. If you tested positive but weren't sick, you could be given the AIDS